Hi, I'm Joy, and welcome to the Side Chef Studio Kitchen. Today we're making sweet and savory gluten-free crepes. We're making a zucchini ricotta crepe with basil salsa verde and a raspberry lemonade crepe. Let's get started. We're making the wet mixture for our crepe batter, so we're just gonna combine milk. We're gonna crack our three eggs. And then we're just gonna pour in our melted butter. So this may seem like a lot of milk, but you do want your crepe batter to be super runny, so it's actually perfect. Trust me, girl. I'm gonna sift in my flour. I want this batter to be super smooth, so this will just help get that texture. So I'm just gonna go slow with the flour. So I'm just gonna add in my salt, and then I'm gonna mix it all together. So you just wanna press the flour into the batter. I really like using store-bought one-for-one gluten-free flour because I find that it mimics gluten the best, but of course you can make your own at home and we do have recipes on the Side Chef app. The batter looks really great, it's super smooth, uh, and then we're just gonna let it chill in the fridge. If you are just leaving it for a couple minutes, there's no need to cover it, but if you are leaving it overnight, you can definitely cover it up. So to prep the ingredients for our lemon curd, we're just gonna start by zesting a lemon. I really love lemon zest. I put it in almost everything. For our lemon curd, we also need a lot of lemon juice, so we're just gonna juice some lemons. Um, I'm just using the lemon that I zested earlier, no need to make any waste here. It's time to make our lemon curd, so we're just gonna combine lemon juice and an egg in a cold pan to start us off. So we're just gonna whisk to combine this. You just wanna break down the yolk into the lemon juice. Let's add in the sugar and the lemon zest. We're just gonna mix it up until it's as combined as it can be. The sugar is gonna start to dissolve. So we're cooking the lemon curd on medium heat. You're just gonna keep whisking it, again, just to ensure that the egg doesn't get cooked at all and everyone's integrated. So I've been mixing the curd for about 10 minutes and now I'm ready to add my butter. So I'm gonna take it off of the heat and then I'm just gonna add in four tablespoons of butter. Our butter is now all melted in and we're ready to pop it in our jar. Here we go. So I'm just gonna put the top on and we're gonna let it cool in the fridge. We're gonna start by preheating our oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius. We're gonna prep our zucchini now. So you can turn your zucchini just so you're not pressing down too hard on one side. So one of the reasons why I chose zucchini is because you can definitely use the whole vegetable when you use this method and you can even garnish with squash blossoms, which are just the flowers that grow on a squash plant. Squash blossoms are beautiful and delicious, so what could be better? So we have our peeled zucchini and now we're just gonna season it up a bit. So I have some olive oil just to help crisp it up a little bit in the oven. Just some simple seasoning here with some salt and of course we have some pepper as well. With fresh zucchini, I really like to keep it simple with salt and pepper, but feel free to customize your spice blend, maybe with some cumin or some chili powder, totally up to you. And we're just gonna toss the zucchini so that we get everybody seasoned and coated. We're gonna lay our dressed zucchini onto our baking tray. We're gonna put the zucchini in the oven just to crisp up for about 10 minutes. Since our zucchini has a pretty mild flavor, I wanted to make a sauce that would bring out its natural freshness. I'm using whole basil. We have four tomatillos. These are canned. If you have fresh ones, that's even better. Then we're gonna go in with some whole garlic cloves, some lemon juice to brighten it up, a whole small jalapeno. If you don't like spicy, you can absolutely de-seed this and chop it up. But I like spicy, so I'm using the whole thing. And then for liquid, we're just gonna use some olive oil. Just to make sure it's not too salty, I'm gonna put the salt in at the end. Let's blend it up. I'm gonna taste the sauce to see how much salt I need. It's actually quite good. I think we only need a little bit of salt. We're just gonna give it another quick blend. Perfect. We're gonna set the sauce aside for now. Bye. It is time for the moment of truth. We are making our crepes. If you've never made crepes before, don't worry about it, you'll get the hang of it. Before we get started, I'm just gonna paint some oil onto the pan. Also, make sure you use a non-stick pan. So, I'm gonna take my ladle. I've filled mine up about three quarters of the way. I'm gonna pick up the pan, and then we're gonna get ready to swirl the batter around. So, here we go. You will see that it will start to cook the second it touches, and then we put it down. 
And then we're gonna let it sit for about a minute to a minute and a half until you can actually see the crepe pick up from the pan. I really love making crepes just because they truly are a blank canvas. You can do whatever you like with them, be super creative. You can make crepes sweet, you can make them savory, but if you don't wanna use them all, you can also freeze them and use them whenever you like. It's time to flip the crepe. Holy crepe, we're gonna get flippy. Okay, here we go. So I'm using my offset. I'm going in from a side that's clearly popping up a bit. We're gonna go all the way under. It should pick up pretty easily. You have it. Boom. The crepe's now been cooking on its second side for about 30 seconds, and then you can just slide it onto a parchment lined paper. I don't want you to think that this came easily to me because it absolutely did not, but with practice, you can be good at anything. As long as you put in the work, everything you make is going to be delicious and your family will praise you for it. It's time to plate our savory crepe. So we're gonna take our crepe and then we're gonna layer some ricotta cheese on the bottom. Any sort of creamy cheese will be great. We're gonna put some sauce on top of the cheese and then we're gonna layer on our zucchini. Now we're gonna fold our crepe. So we're gonna do it in a galette style. So you're just gonna fold it all the edges in and you're gonna leave the middle visible. You're just gonna press down so that it stays in place. So once we're all plated up here, we're gonna serve it with some extra sauce on the side and of course a squash blossom that I picked from my garden this morning. Here we have it, a zucchini ricotta savory gluten-free crepe with basil salsa verde. This totally fresh dish utilizes whole vegetables and gives you a healthy and delicious meal. I hope you enjoy. Now we're gonna plate our sweet crepes. So we're gonna do this in traditional folding style. So we're gonna start by putting the lemon curd all over the bottom of the crepe. Super delicious lemon curd, super excited. Then you're gonna take some raspberries and you're just gonna sprinkle a couple. Um, we are gonna be folding it into a triangle, so you want them all kind of in this quadrant. And then we're gonna fold it. And of course, to top it off, we're gonna do some powdered sugar. I became allergic to a lot of things later in life, so I found a lot of eating really frustrating but I've always been able to eat raspberries and they've given me a real sense of comfort. So I've made this homage to raspberries in the raspberry lemonade crepe. It screams summer and it's always amazing, delicious and bright. I hope you enjoy it. And that's it, we're ready to eat.